guys, well, I left Stefan with the task of informing you the other day and I forgot to do the bit. So without further ado, let's have a quick look at the masterpiece that Stefan prepared for you the day before. I say masterpiece because, well, you'll see. Oh. Put the body panel up here. See? Practically rusted on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't think they've been took off for a while, do you, John? Possibly not. No. Not if ever. See there. That needs a jack in the radiator. So this is just before I actually get on my hands and knees and start taking most of the bigger parts of crap out of the radiator. As you can see there's two radiators, the front one there is for coolant and the rear one which has an allotment garden growing out of it is the oil one. On day two I purchase a water butt and a little hand pressure washer, not ideal but it did, did the job and got rid of most of the crud at the time being uh, about what we've done in the process however what we've done today is I'm here with Lewis good friend who's helping out hello uh, we have reattached the radiator panel radiator's clean ish uh, I forgot to show you that well, that's all under there it's a lot of cleaner than it was wrong bolts but they'll do the trick for now because torques are a pain in the arse to get hold of from the local shops so so it can be driven we've got no nuts and bolts on it we're going to try and sort out some of the electrical issues on it now um, because it's match day and apparently match day is an excuse for this shit so we're completely, or not only, locked in because I pay my rent here but yet apparently I can't come and go on match day when I please anyway that's a different story we'll just wipe up here, get all the oil off the panel and then we'll take a look at trying to get the reversing lights working, 12 volt converter in the cab, and tidying up some of the wiring. Jordan. Well, I've just fixed the kick down with some good old WD-40. We now have the spring that stops you from hitting the kick down is now loose again, so it can actually be used. And I'm now just venturing to find out what other wires are loose and shit down here. On opening the front of the box, we found there's the alarm is in there. So why don't we, as you've seen there, we're, we're messing about with a few bits of the cab, getting the kick down to work. Still doesn't work, but it does now compress like it should do. So that's just going to be a loose wire somewhere, probably. We found the switch to operate the panic alarm, as you'll see in a second, as well as many other things, as you'll see. And then, just to finish this off, we're going to hit a time lapse to end it. We found the panic alarm. It's more like a fire alarm, to be honest with you. Right, well that's that. <laughs> that was not something that he did but okay. I'll carry on this uh, exploration of the wiring system on this. That was used to hold the accelerator down. Would you like the sun? No, I'm all right, me. I'll bet tra travel Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> or a bit more travel Dundee. Oh, they've got a whole ticket. <laughs>
bus is running. And we made it clear that our intention was to get the bus out. You know, we wanted to get off the property. However, we had a few issues. We didn't know how long it would take us to re-secure the radiator with the new poles. And then put the panel on. Apparently it took quite a bloody while. We were fighting with that panel to get that panel back on. So, before we started fighting with this panel, several fuses today that have blown. We've replaced them. Um, good news, the tide now works properly. Uh, it's a bit stronger than it was. It's, it does seem to step up now. Um, unfortunately the reversing lights still don't work. There's no voltage, there's nothing going to them. Um, again, but this could be an issue where we found gear wires, they're the only ones on the bus that are white and there's a connector 
lights and vice versa. They do work. Um, he's had new light clusters, which is a bit odd, and it had only just passed its MLT when we got hold of it. So it either suggests it passed its MLT with non working reversing lights, or some, when they pulled all, out all their CCTV equipment and the other bits and bobs they had in it, they've completely knackered the system. Which would be a bit of a pain in the arse. However, it's fixable. Uh, the 12, 24 to 12 volt converter that we're trying to get working, that's up there. It looks quite clustered, to be honest with you. We might just end up replacing it with one of seven feed in for us. Because we want to put the it would have possibly had a stereo in it at some point. The long journeys to the rallies, putting a stereo in it. We're also putting a CB radio in it because we're going to be doing over the tops and stuff like that. The CB radio is great. The emergency channels on the CB radio are still monitored to this day, even though CB isn't that big. So it's a good thing to have. So we're going to put that in about the way. So we're able to at least rely on the tops now, mobile signal. There's a chance that someone might hear us. Um, like I said they are monitored all the time now. They still are. So we want to put that in. A bit of a laugh as well because it helps when we're doing a convoy we'll be able to talk to each other via the radio rather than two handheld units. Um, so there's plenty of things that need doing electrically to it. We've got a cupboard to rebuild. Climate control doesn't seem to work. Again, that could just be a loose wire. Could have been unplugged. There's a few fuses missing. We need to track down what the should do. Doesn't mean it's gonna do it. Um, so it's all little teething issues. Uh, the bus is now driving, right? It's after the air dump today, it's sitting a bit better. It's not sitting lopsided. So there's going to be more to come anyway. Um, got a bit of a time lapse of us trying to work. We've opened the inspection pumps today. Because uh, the engine, for those that don't know, in the V10s is mounted long ways. So the gearbox is right over the rear wheel basically. So there's no drive shaft, so to speak. It's just a direct virtually a direct drive um, it's just got to put it into the differential so we've opened the inspection pack hatches today and as you'll see somewhere in the video one of them went really well and it was just rust so we've secured it the best we can the rubber seals have seen better days so we need new seals there's nothing coming through the floorboards, no fumes that we can see, smoke or anything. It doesn't really smoke this bus, it's quite a good bus for that. Um, so it's just the little minor things really that we need to do to it. And yeah, I do have a new steering wheel, so if anyone knows anyone that's getting rid of a B10 steering wheel, I'll have a steering wheel. I've got um, what else do we need oh we're going to be fitting the air horns shortly I think you might see that in one of the clips there is air horns to go on the bus to replace the original horn um, so instead of saying can you just please move it's going to be saying more get the f out my way very good when you're behind a taxi driver it was due to a taxi driver, my indicator start broke. <laughs> also, we're going to be putting marker lights on it, on the tail anyway. Um, got them on eBay, quite cheap. I'll put a link below for the listing of them if anyone's interested in them. Um, for the amount of getting two, I could I got the same amount for, for virtually about five pound more. I got twenty. So I've got 20, I've got plenty of spares, I might put a few like the new MMCs have and the newer buses all the way down the sides, but 
Really, I just need them for the tail. Um, but they're a new style, they should be quite bright. So we need to make a wiring harness for that. For the air horns, we need to make a bit of a wiring harness for them because they're operated directly from the cab. Um, they take a direct feed from the air system on the bus. So what we need to do is from the auxiliary tank on the bus, we need to feed an airline down, down the length of the bus to the front and then into a Y split. So when we blow the horn, we're just emptying the auxiliary tank, not emptying the main tanks. But the way the compressor's working, it just won't make a difference anyway. So, anyway, I'm going to leave you with that for now. Either the video is going to come after this, or this is going to be after the video, whichever way. And until next time, I'll record a bit more actual work on the vehicle next time. Lewis had great ideas when he was there. It was, he's a lot more film orientated than I am. Um, being, he's a bit of a performer. Uh, does magic and everything. I put a link to his channel. I'm sure he's got a channel. I'll get a link off, off him and put it below as well for the help that he's been today because he has helped a lot. Being someone that doesn't know anything and he was only there in case because we were playing with the air system, emptying it out and sinking it down. And I was having to reach under to be able to sink it. Um, it was just there as a in case something bad happened. But he actually lent a hand and got his hands quite dirty a lot dirtier than Stefan gets them anyway um, and he, like I say he's a lot more camera orientated so some of the ideas he had was great so until next time I'm hoping i would get it to do it with him again you should have after this you should have me and Chris uh, for at least two videos of us diagnosing a few new issues with it uh, hopefully like maybe getting the reversing lights working or getting the air system to work properly. Chris is going to be test driving it as well at some point because he's not yet driven this bus. Me and Will have, but he hasn't. Also, the warning light should go back in and we should be able to fix the gauges as well. So until next time, please like, comment and subscribe and all that jazz. And we'll see you next time. Stay tuned, don't forget about Patreon. More Patreon, more we can do. So thanks for watching, see you later. Bye bye.